Gentlemen, welcome to the Microwave Lab. Today we're going to be talking about the SWR meter accuracy of my unit in Bearcat 980 single sideband radio. And so everybody in radio uh, knows about standing wave ratio or SWR, which is a measure of reflected power relative to transmitted power. And so in, uh, when you transmit, you'll have some power that's reflected back from your antenna due to uh, a, a mismatch in the impedance. And so uh, we measure that mismatch, or rather we calculate it um, using this ratio here of um, uh, load impedance ZL relative to characteristic imp impedance Z0 and that's that gives us our SWR or standing wave ratio. Now there are a whole bunch of ways uh, you can do this. You can also do it with uh, reflected and transmitted power if you have a meter that can measure that but um, for sim simplicity in the way I did this we're just going to use this uh, this ratio here and um, the way since SWR is uh, an ideal SWR is one and it goes up from there uh, the larger uh, whichever value is larger will be our numerator so if our um, load impedance is less than Z naught then we're going to use Z naught as the numerator as opposed to the denominator and for radio uh, at least ham radio and CB radio Z naught is always going to be 50 ohms uh, and so the way I set up this test was I um, I used several different resistor values to simulate different uh, imp different load impedances and then measured the SWR both with the radio and also with a <laughs> network analyzer and so network analyzers are kind of like a it's kind of like a CAT scan machine uh, for electronics uh, it sends out its own um, sig signal stimulus and then measures for at least for SWR it measures um, reflect the reflected power and then calculates SWR or other uh, parameters this is one of many many functions that you can do with a network analyzer and it's also a two port device I'm just using one port but you can also measure um, gain and, and losses and there, there's a whole bunch of things you can do but we're just using this one this one uh, simple measurement so right now um, I have uh, I, I took a whole bunch of measurements, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show an example of one because it's kind of hard, kind of cumbersome to do. So uh, with holding the camera, so I'm just gonna show one measurement. So here I have I have a, a 100 ohm resistor hooked up. Um, just the, I have a little BNC uh, connector here with this uh, these banana clips. And I just have the resistor uh, screwed in there, and I, I cut the leads just to reduce any. Um, inductances or anything and that's that's sent right in or it's connected right here to the network analyzer and so the network analyzer like I said sends out a little bit of a signal and then measures the uh, the uh, reflected power so we're measuring at um, my favorite uh, channel to measure is uh, channel 20 on CB 27.205 megahertz and you can see there we're at channel 1 in yellow we're measuring uh, SWR and um, I have a marker here at 27.205 megahertz and this is a, a frequency domain measurement so we have frequency along the x axis here and um, you can see it's right around uh, two, which makes sense based on the uh, the calculation. I'll show that in a second. There's there's our marker, and we're measuring 2.026 thereabouts. And so if we go over here to on paper, um, uh, based on my calculation, so it's a 100, 100 ohm nominal resistor, and I measured with a multimeter, and we have uh, just over 100 ohms. And so SWR, we'd expect 100, uh, whichever number is greater, we're using load impedance, which is greater. So 100 over 50 is 2. And so we measure with um, measure with the network analyzer. We got 2.024. It's a little bit different now. I did this uh, earlier, but it's uh, generally the same. And uh, when, I, when I measured with the radio, I got 2.07. So pretty pretty close here. And I'm actually going to show this with the radio. I just have to move this uh, BNC over here and you can ignore all these the meters over here I'm just I don't have a, a convenient way to get all these connectors uh, together so I'm just using these uh, the this older meter as a, uh, a means to connect this uh, uh, resistor so there's the 100 ohm resistor and we'll come over here to the radio and like I was saying you have to you first go over into the, the um, cal menu and then you, you calibrate it so you can see it's already calibrated um, and then we'll measure SWR and this is a you can see, well, I'll just show the measurement, 2.0502. So just, just over 2 and change, where did I write down? 2.07. And this is a, a really, really small resistor. This is about a, probably a quarter watt or even an eighth watt resistor. So um, I'm trying to keep those, those push-to-talk key-ups uh, brief so we don't smoke the resistor because my dead key is about uh, 6 watts or so. Um, so so that's, that was the general... Um, the procedure for measuring all these I did the same thing over and over again but like I said it's a little bit cumbersome to try to calibrate it and, and do that all at once while holding the camera so I just I took all these measurements with different with different uh, resistors so we'll just we'll run through and see so I have a 50, I used a 51 ohm I couldn't find a 50 but I ideally that's what your antenna would would look like 
Um, and, and bear in mind, this is just at one channel. When you, there are other videos out there about how to measure SWR on, on your radio. You tune it, you check channel one, then you check channel 40, and then you, you compare those and, and make some adjustments. But you can, go, you can go watch those videos, but this is more about the accuracy of the meter than actually tuning your, your SWR. So we're just we're focusing on one channel here, which should give us, give us what we're looking for. So started off with 51 ohms or about 50 ohms, and it's pretty darn accurate. That's good enough for my money. And then we, um, we'll move up to 68 ohms, which is just uh, about 69 and change. Um, and so our calculated, <coughs> excuse me, calculated SWR is um, almost 1.4, 1. it's a 1.384. And so we measured with the network analyzer, 1.408, radio measured, 1.44, still very close. Um, even, I mean, that's up to two decimal places on the radio, but generally you're talking uh, one decimal place for SWR, so 1.4, and those, those are... Um, dead on. You guys can go calculate these percent errors and see if it matters. And then for the 100 ohm, we expect two. Like I showed, we have a, a two and change, and these are generally the same. I had an anomaly, or anomalies, I, these are all, as you can see, these are all greater than characteristic impedance at 50 ohms, but when I, I checked some lower values, like I said, we always go with the, the larger number on the numerator. So in this case, I used a 39 ohm, which is just about 39 ohms ended up being. Um, SWR, we calculate with uh, characteristic impedance on the top. So it's 50 divided by 39.3. We got 1.27 and network analyzer measured that perfectly. But the radio actually measured, it just showed one flat. And the same thing happened down here with a 30 ohm uh, resistor. I wanted to get out, get outside the range a little bit. Uh, and so we have an SWR of 1.67 um, calculated here. And then the network analyzer was pretty much spot on, but the radio once again measured just about zero. And so that was, that was kind of, uh, you know, uh, puzzling to me because I, I was really hoping it would it would be a, as accurate as, uh, as accurate as it was for these other um, these other values where it was it was pretty much spot on. But my my guess is that internal to the radio, it it maybe mathematically it, it just doesn't consider um, a, a possible impedance that's lower than the 50 ohm nominal or characteristic impedance, uh, and that's probably because of so in in other words inside the the radio when it's calculating this SWR or it, you know, it, it's measuring probably measuring um, this impedance so it's measuring the load impedance and then dividing by this to calculate SWR and then display it on the screen um, so it's it, most likely it's not considering the possibility over here that the load impedance is actually less than characteristic impedance uh, and so when you have um, uh, 30, let's say 30, 30, 30 ohms or 39 ohms here. It just, it's just dividing 39 b by this, and then it spits out a, the the minimum possible value, which is uh, an SWR of one. So that's my guess, and I, I think the way the reason maybe that was by accident, or maybe that's um, maybe that was purposeful because they, pro you know, the designers probably figured that the odds of the uh, the um, load impedance being less than 50 ohms is probably pretty slim with cable losses and connectors and and uh, antenna coils and and all that factored in and and uh, you know that's that's most likely what's going on um, so that's I, I mean if you're looking you're looking at these values and these are pretty pretty much uh, you know dead on here for for these these values but when you get when you you get below the range there I mean obviously it's not even not even close. So, I, I'd say the meter is the built-in meter is decent at best. It'll it'll get you started. And the the thing to remember here with SWR is that this is more of a relativistic measurement than anything else. Uh, you know, if you're if you're tuning your antenna, and like I said, you can go watch other videos about how to tune antennas, and you you measure uh, an SWR of two, and then you do a little bit of tuning, and then you get 1.8 then you know you improve your SWR all you're trying to do is make it uh, as low as possible so even if that value was it was actually 2.2 instead of 2 and then you lowered it to 2 instead of 1.8 um, you're still improving your SWR so so as far as getting started on you know with the radio and and getting started on uh, you know in your car taking measurements or you know, base station you know I'm using this as a mobile radio so that's how I'm thinking of it um, it, it'll get you started, and assuming that you're, uh, you know, if you're reading uh, SWR of, of one flat, you know, either your antenna is perfectly tuned, um, or uh, you know, the the impedance is less than is less than uh, what it expected, which would be somewhat of an anomaly, given that it, the impedance is likely to go up from 50 due to cable losses and etc. So um, something to play around with if you're getting. If you're getting uh, consistent measurements on here, uh, I would say try playing around with detuning it a little bit and, and see see how it changes, see if it 
um, you know, run, see if it changes as expected as you lengthen and shorten the antenna. And like I said, there are other other videos about how to interpret those measurements. But this is more about just about testing the um, the accuracy of the meter. And so I, I'd, I'd give it a thumbs up um, based on the measurements you're most likely to get, which would be a uh, a measured impedance greater than um, or a load impedance greater than nominal impedance. So. That's about it for this video. I'd say final recommendation gets you know it'll this will get you started, but I would go out and, and try to find a um, an SWR meter if you want to really uh, really get some finer uh, measurements. So anyway, that's that's all for now. Hope you learned something, and uh, more uh, more Bearcat radios to come. So thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.